Hello, good evening, welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's six o'clock on Friday the 5th of July. I'm reading Common Worship Daily Prayer, Evening Prayer on Friday in Ordinary Time, which you'll find towards the beginning of the book. Also at the Church of England's website, a Remus Daily Prayer, downloadable as app for Apple or Android device. You're welcome to join me in the building in person, 8 and 6, Tuesday to Saturday, or by Zoom, same times. The codes are on the Blind Valley Church's website and Facebook page. We're live streaming on Facebook, and the audio will be on my Dominic Dobel YouTube channel presently. O oh God, make speed to save us, O oh Lord, make haste to help us. A song of entreaty, verses from Psalm 143. Hear my prayer, O oh Lord, and, give faith in your, and in your faithfulness give ear to my supplications. Answer me in your righteousness. Enter not into judgment with your servant, for in your sight shall no one living be justified. My spirit faints within me, my heart within me is desolate. I stretch out my hands to you, my soul gasps for you like a thirsty land. O Lord, make haste to answer me, my spirit fails me. Hide not your face from me, lest I be like those who go down to the pit. Let me hear of your loving kindness in the morning, for in you I put my trust. Show me the way I should walk in, for I lift up my soul to you. Teach me to do what pleases you, for you are my God. Let your kindly spirit lead me on a level path. Revive me, O Lord, for your name's sake. For your righteousness' sake, bring me out of trouble. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As, your mercy, as, you, as our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. We have three psalms appointed this evening, 130, 131 and 137, 130, 131, 137. And you'll find the psalms at the back of the book. My soul waits for the Lord. Out of the depths have I cried to you, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears consider well the voice of my supplication. If you, Lord, were to mark what is done amiss, O Lord, who could stand? But there is forgiveness with you, so that you shall be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits for him. In his word is my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than the night watch for the morning, more than the night watch for the morning. O Israel, wait for the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy. With him is plenteous redemption, and he shall redeem Israel from all their sins. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. My soul waits for the Lord. O Israel, trust in the Lord. O Lord, my heart is not proud. My eyes are not raised in haughty looks. I do not occupy myself with great matters, with things that are too high for me. But I have quieted and stilled my soul like a weaned child on its mother's breast. So my soul is quieted within me. O Israel, trust in the Lord from this time forth for evermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. O Israel, trust in the Lord. O 
We pray for the peace of Jerusalem. By the waters of Babylon we sat down and wept. When we remembered Zion, as for our lyres, we hung them up on the willows that grow in that land. <clears throat> for there our captors asked for a song, our tormentors called for mirth. Sing us one of the songs of Zion. <clears throat> How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its still let let my right hand forget its skill. Let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth if I do not remember you, if I set not Jerusalem above my highest joy. Remember, O Lord, against the people of Edom the day of Jerusalem. How they said, Down with it, down with it, even to the ground. O daughter of Babylon, doomed to destruction, happy the one who repays you for all you've done to us, who takes your little ones and dashes them against the rock. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. O pray for the peace of Jerusalem. So that's one of those most appalling lines in Scripture. Uh, at the end of that psalm. I don't want to comment on the psalms, but there is obviously that feeling um, amongst Zionists even today that those who are the enemy of God or God's people, um, that is how their animal lives and their pups deserve to be dealt with because they have stood against the Holy One uh, and caused pain and grief in the taking of hostages um, we might not have those experiences, but we might be moved to hatred and uh, anger and desperation, violence against others as a nation. We have had a view that uh, children should die in those boats coming across the sea rather than be helped and rescued and looked after and cared for. In many of the countries they come from, we've destabilised as a nation. Maybe under the new government we will change our tune, but it just brings that violent nature of humanity to the fore and then we pray that God be gracious and move us to become peaceable people. Song of the Justified, the canticle in evening prayer on Friday. Turn back to evening prayer on Friday for it. If you are following in a book, scroll on past the first reading if you are following electronically. Our hope is not in vain because God's love has been poured into our hearts. God reckons as righteous those who believe. We believe in him who raised Jesus from the dead. For Christ was handed over to death for our sins and raised to life for our justification. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Christ we have gained access to the grace in which we stand and rejoice in our hope of the glory of God. We even exult in our sufferings, for suffering produces endurance and endurance brings hope. And our hope is not in vain, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit given to us. God proves his love for us. While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Since we have been justified by his death, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath? Therefore we exult in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, in whom we have now received our reconciliation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Our hope is not in vain, because God's love has been poured into our hearts. Our first reading from the book of Ezekiel which uh, is in the prophecy section of the Hebrew Scriptures, I think about four books in, so if you open your Bible halfway through, move towards the back after the Psalms and uh, Ecclesiastes, or Ecclesiasticus, whichever one it is, and Song of Songs and the like, the Wisdom section, move to the prophecy section, which concludes the Hebrew Scriptures um, with quite a collection of uh, prophecies. The first two are the major, certainly yeah, the first few are the major, perhaps I should say, but Isaiah and Jeremiah open, uh, and then we move on, I think, via Daniel to Ezekiel, we the book of Ezekiel, and we for the large number eight in the margin, chapter number eight. In the sixth year, in the sixth month, on the fifth day of the month, as I sat in my house with the elders of Judah sitting before me, the hand of the Lord God fell upon me there. I looked, and there was a figure that looked like a human being. Below what appeared to be its loins, it was fire, and above the loins, it was like the appearance of brightness, like a gleaming amber. It stretched out the form of a hand, took me by a lock of my ha head, and the Spirit lifted me up between earth and heaven and brought me in visions of God to Jerusalem to the entrance of the gateway of the inner court that faces north to the seat of the image of jealousy, which provokes to jealousy. And the glory of the God of Israel was there, like the vision that I had seen in the valley. Then God said to me, O mortal, lift up your eyes now in the direction of the north. So I lifted up my eyes towards the north, and there north of the altar gate in the entrance was this image of jealousy. 
he said to me, mortal, do you see what they are doing, the great abominations that the house of Israel are committing here to drive me far from my sanctuary? Yet you will see still greater abominations. And he brought me to the entrance of the court. I looked and there was a hole in the wall. And he said to me, mortal, dig through the wall. And I, when I dug through the wall, there was an entrance. He said to me, go in and see the vile abominations that they're committing there. So I went in and looked. There portrayed on the wall all round were all kinds of creeping things and loathsome animals and all the idols of the house of Israel. Before them stood seventy of the elders of the house of Israel with Jarzaniah, son of Shaphan, standing among them. Each had his censer in his hand and a fragrant cloud of incense was ascending. Then he said to me, mortal, have you seen what the elders of the house of Israel are doing in the dark, each in his room of images? For they say the Lord does not see us, the Lord has forsaken the land. He said also to me, you will see still greater abominations that they are committing. Then he brought me to the entrance of the north gate of the house of the Lord. Women were sitting there weeping for Tammuz. Then he said to me, have you seen this, O mortal? You will still see still greater abominations than these. And he brought me into the inner court of the house of the Lord. There at the entrance of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about 25 men with their backs to the temple of the Lord and their faces towards the east, prostrating themselves to the sun towards the east. Then he said to me, have you seen this, O mortal? Is it not bad enough that the house of Judah commits the abominations, abominations done here? Must they fill the land with violence and provoke my anger still further? See, they are putting the branch to their nose, therefore I will act in wrath. My eye will not spare, nor will I have pity. Though they cry in my hearing with a loud voice, I will not listen to them. So Ezekiel has been given visions, dreams, experiences of worship of false gods, but not just that, taking place in and around the temple, which should be Clean, clear, pure, holy, dedicated to the true worship of the true one in a true way. <clears throat> and uh, these animals, they're loathsome animals, I guess. They're animals that uh, A, shouldn't be depicted, well, A, shouldn't be depicted on the one hand and on the, on the other um, are probably those that are, um, they are told to avoid as non-kosher as food. And yet they are being worshipped. These are worshipping creatures as images and we're told to make no images and not to worship anything other than god now the sun is being worshipped uh, by a group of 25 men that's probably a significant number maybe there are 25 family groups or whatever that were doing that maybe there were 25 um, roles within the temple um, we're told there's an image of jealousy so that would be um, some significant idol i should imagine um, in the temple rather than uh, the focus of attention being on um, the mercy seat and uh, the showbreads and uh, the lights and the altars of atonement, etc. Um, and the people don't think that God can see, and yet God has taken Ezekiel to see it, sort of in his mind's eye. And uh, that repeated line, Mortal, have you seen what the elders of the house of Israel are doing? you will see still greater abominations that they are committing. And this is to spur Ezekiel, or the writers of Ezekiel, it's to spur us as the hearers, this is written to Jewish people, at and around the time of exile, to encourage them to worship the true God in spirit and in truth. But we read this and we think of all those things and all those ways in which perhaps we are not worshipping as we should. Um, maybe we're not putting God first. Maybe our, we are involving... Um, ways of worshipping God rather than just sticking to the mass or the breaking of bread involving other things that are if you like worldly and worshipping the thing rather than our source and maker so it just sends us I think into that kind of space where we may um, sort out and look at gives an opportunity to review how and what we worship and uh, whether we might be people might be taken out of themselves and given a, a dream, vision, waking vision of us and how we worship and how we need to be forgiven, how we need to be humble before God and uh, pray God's grace and mercy to uh, restore us to worship in spirit and in truth, the one true God, worshiping with all our strength, soul, mind, body, as our God is one. 2 Corinthians 4 then, scroll on to that, our second reading. 2 Corinthians uh, comes after 1 Corinthians, funnily enough. Um, not quite halfway through the last third of the Bible. So the last third of the Bible is the Christian material, Christ, uh, Greek scriptures. After the four Gospels, you've got Acts and Romans, and then we move into 1 
and 2 Corinthians. So look at the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We look at the chapter number 4. So the chapter number is the large number of the margin. The uh, book number is in the title of the book, of course, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Scroll onto it if you're following electronically. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We have renounced the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slayers for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, let the light shine out of darkness, who has shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in clay jars, so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. But just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with Scripture, I believed and so I spoke, we also believe and so we speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake, so that grace as it extends to more and more people may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. <clears throat> so we do not lose heart, even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For well, this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure, because we look not at what can be seen, but at what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. So I tend to think of 2 Corinthians being written by Paul on his return journey. So his outward journey, everybody's pleased to see him and he leaves instructions. They're all pleased and happy and on his return journey, they've all started to gossip, find other people to relate to, decide he's not coming back, he doesn't like them, that uh, he's a bit of a fusspot. And uh, so his 2 Corinthians is much more kind of uh, like pastoral letters or instructions um, given maybe by a bishop or an archdeacon. He's um, trying to keep the congregations all ticking over and heading in the right direction. So this opens with him saying, uh, it's because we're engaged in this ministry that we do not lose heart. It goes on to say we're persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed. But we have the same spirit of faith. So what we're going through at the moment is a slight momentary affliction. And uh, so whether you're in leadership, whether you are a follower, um, life might not be ideal for you. And he's writing this about himself, but to people who are being persecuted, you are thinking that the, the life of Christ might not be for them. Uh, we overlook the, perhaps from time to time the extraordinary power um, we might get caught up in um, error. He says, we've renounced shameful things. We refuse to practice cunning. So he's avoiding the um, pitfalls that Ezekiel is uh, speaking against to the, the leadership in his day. And uh, so we must too. So this is kind of a, I think, a really lovely insight into the, the way Paul is thinking uh, as he sees himself as both a leader and a follower. Uh, and so we, as we follow and lead, uh, maybe need to read through this and recognize that uh, we have a great calling we have great power whilst we suffer nevertheless the glory that awaits us is uh, beyond our imagining because what is seen is temporary but what can be seen is eternal the response we then back in evening prayer on friday forsake me not O lord be not far from me O my god forsake me not O lord be not far from me O my god make haste to help me O lord of my salvation be not far from me O my god Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. The Song of Mary. You have scattered the proud in their conceit, and lifted up the lowly. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. In this day your generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him. From generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones, and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. He has scattered the proud in their conceit, and lifted up the lowly. <clears> Thank <throat> you.
<coughs> sacrifice at Saviour Seal, three and one, one in three. We thank you for um, the past day and the blessings that you won for us uh, through your birth, baptism, ministry, transfiguration, death, resurrection. And then we thank you for establishing that uh, in us and giving us those glimpses as Ezekiel, as Ezekiel was given glimpses of uh, apostasy. We've been given glimpses of glory and hope and eternity, fullness of life during this day, and we thank you for them. But we might also have had glimpses, as Ezekiel did, of uh, things going awry, things of which we are ashamed, um, situations, circumstances that we would like to be free of or free from. So we bring those to you at the end of the day, praying for your healing and your restoration. From Release International, we pray for people that they work with who provide legal aid for Christian pastors in Sri Lanka who have been falsely accused or are being investigated because of their faith. Turning to Christian aid. Uh, we pray for our new MP, Adrian, and uh, they invite us to use their resources to invite them to meet our church. So, yes, our chap already knows us. We pray for those who have uh, had to step down to after all the effort and bother and efforts of uh, the last few weeks to try and get themselves elected. And uh, for Keir Starmer and his new cabinet as they are listed and named, we pray for his protection, for his wisdom. And uh, we really do pray that his uh, opening speech calling for the rebuilding of faith and hope and life and light and honesty in our nation, welcome and inclusion, that we will indeed uh, move in that direction. For all those who are, whose wealth is counted in terms of actual money, uh, who I consider poor, alongside those whose wealth is notional based on stocks and shares, who I would consider the rich. Church of England's prayers for the Holy Land, God of compassion and justice, we cry out to you for those who cannot see anything but rage and violence, that you would surprise them with mercy and turn their hearts towards kindness for their fellow human beings. We pray for a change of heart in that regard from our new administration. Joint Public Issues Team Prayer for Ukraine. Here yeah, our long leaders and nations, including our own, will honour the worth of all people by having courage to resolve conflict through dialogue. And I pray we will step away from trying to ferment violence, rather build peace. As we move towards our diocese, we pray for our bishops, Martin and Mike. Martin, as he steps down, Mike, as he moves on, uh, we pray for the all involved in recruiting a new bishop. We pray that that person will be um, the right person for the job and that they will support and sustain parochial stipendiary ministry and uh, the worth of church buildings and be able to draw funding from uh, central church commissioners um, to support that which has been traditionally the backbone over thousands of years. Um, or at least hundreds in our country, um, over and above what I consider to be um, the short-term business model that they seem to be funding at the moment, which is uh, liable to destabilise. We pray for our Archdeacon Rich, uh, me as rural dean, that we can do what we may to support and sustain um, good practice and well-being and a fruitfulness in the ministries of those who are ordained and lay, uh, looking after our church committees, church buildings, our worship and our outreach and engagement and our discipleship. And we pray for Sarah and Pauline, who are lead clergy in Coombs and Finborough, and those who work with them as a house for duty, permission to officiate, licensed as uh, readers and uh, elders. Pray for their church wardens, treasurers and secretaries that uh, keep those parishes going, others on those PCCs, and their support, supporters from the community that one might call the righteous as uh, they give their time and money to uh, promote the work of God in that place. We echo our uh, prayers for newly elected members of Parliament, and uh, we pray for Frolian, who is Director of Community-Based Inclusive Development, sorry, the Community-Based Inclusive Development Organisation in Kigera, whatever that may be, and uh, we pray that... Uh, every blessing on uh, his ministry in and through that organisation. 
tend to our villages. We pray for the people and businesses associated with the addresses of Linster Road, Cookley Street, Mary's Lane in Cookley, Low Road, Clay Hill, Barrows Hill, Heveningham Road, Church Road, Hurstle Road, Heveningham, Long Road, The Street in Heveningham, Bricker Kiln Lane, Barrows Hill, The Street, Laundry Lane, Bridge Street, Linster Road, Cranfield Road in Huntingfield, and in Walpole, Hales of Road, Granfield Road, Pease and Hall Road, Cookley Street, Cookley Road, The Kink, Clink, Neve Place, and Church Hill. Pray for people in those addresses of whom life is not going so well that they will turn to the churches, perhaps, for succour, silence, solace, uh, the buildings and the people. And they will find that there, where things are going well for people. May they make their contribution to those buildings and their communities uh, as they uh, care for and engage with those in need near and far. Pray for businesses based in or serving those addresses. They will thrive and prosper, especially those involved in farming and hospitality at this time of busyness and harvest. And we ask for blessing of Peter, Rachel, Andrew and Molly, Jeff, Leslie, Helen, Jean, Felicity, Henry, Daphne, Val, Paul, David, Tracy, Francis, Joan, Malcolm, Billy, Ginny, John, Maya, Sue, John, Veronica, Moira, Cynthia, David. We pray for these and others we may know who need your grace, mercy, breakthrough, healing, provision. We pray that they will know your presence and that will give them hope. Just as Paul's known he was serving you, encourage him in his difficulties. May that be the case for these. Pray for those that walk with them, they in their turn will have their support and comfort. And uh, we thank you for all the good lives of Brian, Charles, Anne, Margaret, Joel, Valerie, Jesse, Mary, Lee, and all others who have recently died, including those who have died suddenly and unprepared, through sickness, violence, neglect, accident, and those that have taken their own lives. Pray for those we've known and loved and seen no longer, those who have served you faithfully here. And we ask that according to your promises, humanity grant us with them a share in your eternal kingdom. We pray for the, ourselves and all who mourn the loss of love and all a change in life chances. We pray that you might be for us the way, the truth, and the life. Lord, hear us, Lord, graciously hear us. <laughs> I'm <laughs> Heal us, O God, from all our afflictions and keep us steadfast in your love. Bind up our wounds, raise us from death and lead us to fullness of life through Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube.